What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego on the back with some more boxing. Now I want to get you guys all caught up to speed. Got a ton of videos that I'm working on. Just been working all the way around. And I, again, I want to get you guys caught up to speed for those of you guys who may have missed it. So, Victor Ortiz, Vicious Victor Ortiz, was supposed to face Carlos Molina on the Adrian Broner, Marcos Maidana undercard. Victor Ortiz was going to move up to 154 and instantly get a title shot. I made a video and I was asking, I did a poll asking if you think Victor Ortiz deserves a title shot after 18 months of inactivity and two back-to-back -back losses. A lot of you guys uh, reached out, left comments, and majority of you, if you go back and look at the comments on the video, said, hell no, he doesn't deserve a title shot, but we know boxing is a business and it is what it is. But as of right now, this fight is not going on anymore. And it looks like the, the IBF, who Carlos Molina has a belt with, stepped in and decided he doesn't meet the criteria. Again, two losses. He has no like pull or leverage at 154, Victor Ortiz that is, because he's never fought at 154, to my knowledge, professionally. And this whole thing was supposed to go down on the Broner Maidana card, and it just fell apart. And we've seen this happen before. Um, fights not going... Like this year, I mean, I can think of countless. Kell Brook and Devin Alexander. Devin Alexander and Mir Khan. David Hay versus Tyson Fury. Um, just countless fight after fight. Now, recently, Shane uh, Mosley and Anthony Mundine. These fights aren't working because, I, I mean, for various reasons. I don't want to get into each individual one. But as far as this fight, let me give you some insight. As you guys know, boxing is a business. These matchmakers, these promoters, at the end of the day, they're businessmen. They have to protect their investments, i.e. their fighters, their fights that they set up, etc. So, honestly, in a situation like this, they put Victor Ortiz, whether he deserved it or not, they put him in a position, or they wanted to put him in a position, to be back in the limelight. Because he has an exciting style of fight. He got a lot of exposure with the Stallone movie. He um, is going to be in The Expandables 3. So his name is ringing bells just through that. Plus, he was on Dancing with the Stars. So that opens up the floodgates to a whole different demographic. And then you have other people who are great fighters like Austin Trout. And they're having to fight the tough fights. They have to fight the uh, Edis Londi Loras. And the Edis Londi Loras have to fight them and, and that kind of thing. Austin Trout is from a small place in New Mexico. He's not as marketable. He's slippery. His style of fight is not, quote-unquote, exciting. It's not as exciting as a, a Victor Ortiz, some would say. So for a variety of reasons, and boxing being a business, you have sometimes people who get passed up in line when, honestly, a fighter like Austin Trout or Edis Lani Laura, they probably work harder to get that title shot than Victor Ortiz, who's literally done nothing at 154. Fuck if he's exciting. Fuck if he's um, popular. This is, shouldn't be a popularity contest, but that's what boxing is. Same thing with Amir Khan. Amir Khan hasn't done shit at welterweight, yet he's in talks to possibly get a shot at Mayweather because he brings in a different demographic, a different um, region of the world, and fans from the Muslim community and in England, in the UK, whatever fans he has out there. So, this is the world we live in. This is what boxing has become. It's not always right. We've had some great fights, so I can't complain too much. We have had great fights, even with these other fights not happening. But it's just crazy how much of a business it is to the point where people are automatically given title shots. That's why you hear the terms like paper champion get brought up more because people get spoon-fed these fights and then they get up and fight the Sergio Martinez like Chavez Jr. or whatnot. Chavez Jr. has been afforded a lot of opportunities based on his name and who his father was and what his father did to the game. Not saying he sucks. I think he just needs to... Actually, he's better than I initially thought he was. Um, he shows he has a chin. He shows he could take a beating and still almost rise to the occasion, that kind of stuff. He just lacks discipline, and he needs to work on that and decide what he wants to do. But like I said, I'm not here to pick on anyone. I think Victor Ortiz was a game player. Like I said, this is chess, not checkers. And these promoters, the way I'm going to tell you how their mind works, their mind works in the sense of they're thinking two or three steps ahead. They're making fight A, but they're already thinking about fight B and fight C. And we've seen it time and time again. 
Canelo was supposed to face Victor Ortiz, and then he got his jaw broken. Um, they they always do this pre planning shit where fights are supposed to be made, and they're already looking beyond. Like Amir Khan was supposed to knock Danny Garcia out or whatever, and he was supposed to get a Mayweather shot. Mayweather in jail was saying that he wanted to fight Amir Khan, and they were already talking about that fight. Danny Garcia upset that plan. So this is nothing new. This happens all the time. These promoters, again, are two, three steps, two, three fights ahead and constantly looking for the next dollar sign and how they can capitalize depending on the outcome of these fights. And sometimes they plan too far ahead and things that you don't expect happen. Like, I don't think anyone really expected Abner Mars to get starched and knocked out in the first round. And if you did, point out their YouTube video where they predicted that before the fight. So... It's boxing. These promoters can continue doing it, but at the end of the day, it's a roller coaster ride. You don't really know all the turns and twists that are going to come about. Sometimes you have people like Ruslan Provodnikov who won't take no for an answer. They look suspect or look more fatigued in one fight against Timothy Bradley. Next fight, they come out with a certain ferocity and put another blemish on Mike Alvarado's record or whoever they're fighting. So you never know in boxing. I thought Danny Garcia and Lucas Matisse would have more oh shit moments for Danny Garcia, but he controlled the pace and he looked good, especially late. So it's boxing. That's one thing that I definitely love about this sport. But honestly, Golden Boy, I really feel they were thinking a couple plays ahead at, for Victor Ortiz in this situation. Victor Ortiz, a Mexican fighter, Canelo, a Mexican fighter coming off a loss, I think they were trying to get Victor Ortiz back in the spotlight to make a match that they were already talking about making last year, but Victor Ortiz's plans were thwarted when Josecito Lopez broke his jaw in a, shock, in a shocking upset. So I think they were trying to revisit that match, possibly set up a match if Victor Ortiz looked good enough or convincingly beat Carlos Molina or something, possibly set up a match for Mayweather. As you guys know, when it comes to Mayweather, a lot of times he makes it look like easy work. So... It's hard to justify certain rematches. Jose Luis Castillo, that was a tough fight. And that was early on in Mayweather's career. A rematch happened later that year. Victor Ortiz, it looked like the fight was unfolding in a certain way. But it did in a con end in a controversial fashion. So the buildup for that fight, if Victor Ortiz was back in the limelight, back looking good, had some solid wins under his belt or a or even a belt, not just solid wins or the belt, if he actually had a belt, like if he were to beat Carlos Molina, I think they were trying to go somewhere right around that route, set up a possible Mayweather rematch, because Mayweather at this point doesn't have that many options, I'll save that to talk about in another video, so that's the update, Victor Ortiz, Carlos Molina, no longer taking place, what do you guys feel about this, what do you think, I personally would like to see Victor Ortiz and Robert Guerrero, Victor Ortiz, I wish they could make Keith Thurman, but he's already fighting Jesus Soto Caras. Um, I think there's some good fights at 147 that can be made within the Golden Boy stable. Um, I don't really know if Victor Ortiz would go up to 154 if he's not getting a title shot. Don't really see the point. Um, Devin Alexander's tied up with Sean Porter. I doubt they would just go straight into a Mayweather rematch. Plus, Mayweather already fought two times this year, so he's done for this year. So, really, I don't know exactly who... Victor Ortiz is going to fight the fourth quarter of this year. Again, Sean Porter, Devin Alexander, they're tied up. You have um, Keith Thurman and uh, Jesus Soto Carras. Andre Berto rematch doesn't really make sense. I mean, it might sell, but Berto looked like shit in his last two fights against Guerrero and um, Josecito, or excuse me, Jesus Soto Carras. So I don't know if they would really go in that direction either. So the the opportunities that I really see would be a fight. Kell Brooks with Sinchenko. Like a lot of people are tied up at 47. Um, so the matches that I would want to see personally where they don't have dance partners would be people like Robert Guerrero. I think that'd be a great fight. Um, I don't know if they would make Danny Garcia or somebody from 140 move up to uh, 47 to face Victor Ortiz. So I, I really don't know which way they're going to head. I, I would say Robert Guerrero is the name that really stands out that I'd really like to see Victor Ortiz square up against um, at this particular fight if they're looking for a fight at um, 47 this year. If not, 
I would like to see him fight Amir Khan. I think that's another fight that that could be made at 47. Um, I don't know how it it end up, but shit, make it happen. If, if Khan's jaw can hold up, we'll see. And one of the best possible situations if they can't get a Robert Guerrero fight, which I'd really like to see Victor Ortiz against, is if they get Victor Ortiz versus Shane Mosley and put it on the Adrian Broner, Marcos Maidana undercard. I would pay for that. I would pay $65 or whatever it is for that pay-per-view. If they had Adrian Broner, Marcos Maidana, Shane Mosley versus Victor Ortiz, and then they had Jesus Soto Carras versus Keith Thurman, I would pay the pay-per-view amount for that for sure without any questions. And that's a fun fucking fight, Shane Mosley versus Victor Ortiz. At the very least, you can say whatever about Shane, but he has heart, he has a chin. Um, we all know that Mayweather was too much for him. We all know that Canelo was too much for him. But a fight with Victor Ortiz, that's going to be really telling to me. I personally think Shane Mosley probably should have retired a little while ago. But I'm a grown man, just like Shane Mosley's a grown man. I can't tell him when to stop fighting. So if he wants to keep getting paid and feels he still has it in him to compete, shit, so be it. Now, matching him with Victor Ortiz, that would be a good fight. Like I said, Shane has a chin. He's not necessarily... A, ideal at 154 they can make the fight at 147 um this again is going to be a telling fight because Victor Ortiz is off back-to-back -back losses one in a shocking upset where he got his jaw broken so that's going to be a fight where you can't take a Shane Mosley lightly ever just because um we've seen him over the years and we know what he's capable of actually Shane Mosley I think he beat every Mexican fighter he was up against um Except for Canelo. I think that's where, or maybe his, the biggest one, the biggest fights he had against Mexicans. Um, so that'd be really telling. And then for Shane Mosley, it'd be really telling because we'd be able to see if he looked horrible in that fight or if he got stopped or whatever. Yeah, maybe you should call it quit, Shane, and um, let the younger kids and the younger generation take over the sport and train your son and that kind of stuff. So that's the best possible situation for me. Victor Ortiz, Robert Guerrero, or Shane Mosley. And Robert Guerrero. Shane Mosley's fight with Mundane got canceled. Shit, make this happen. Golden Boy, if you're listening, Richard Schaefer, I know you can make stuff happen. Make that fight happen. That's a fight that will justify your pay-per-view price or making it a pay-per-view. Again, Broner versus Maidana. Some people feel Broner's premature. Not really a pay-per-view draw yet. That he needs some bigger fights. Uh, Marcos Maidana, I think he's only really been on pay-per-view against Eric Morales um, in terms of a headlining fight. So, shit, if you could make Shane Mosley, Victor Ortiz, again, that's a fun fight. And I feel a lot of the, the fans who, who may not be sold on like the pay-per-view card as of right now would probably invest in it. So let me know what you guys think of this news. As always, hate, comment, or subscribe. Till next video, it's Ego signing off.